Brought to you by Wikivd Documentaries. Alexei Navalny. Alexei Anatolievich Navalny is a Russian lawyer, political and financial activist and politician. Since 2009, he has gained prominence in Russia and in the Russian and international media as a critic of corruption and of Russian President Vladimir Putin. He has organized large-scale demonstrations promoting democracy and attacking political corruption, Putin, and Putin's political allies. He has run for a political office on the same platform. In 2012, the Wall Street Journal described him as the man Vladimir Putin fears most. A self-described nationalist Democrat, Navalny is a Russian Opposition Coordination Council member and the leader of the political party Progress Party, formerly People's Alliance. In September 2013, he ran in the Moscow mayoral election, supported by the RPRPARNAS party. He came in second, with 27% of the vote, losing to incumbent mayor Sergei Sobyanin, a Putin appointee. His vote total was much higher than political analysts had expected. But Navalny and his allies insisted that the actual number was still higher, and that authorities had committed election fraud in order to prevent a runoff election from taking place. Navalny came to prominence via his blog, hosted on the website Live Journal, which remains his primary method of communicating with the public. He has used his blog to attack Putin and his allies, to organize political demonstrations, to post documents showing Putin and his allies to be engaged in unsavory behavior and, most recently, to promote his campaigns for office. He has also been active in other media, most notably, in a 2011 radio interview he described Russia's ruling party, United Russia, as a party of crooks and thieves, which soon became a popular epithet. He created the Anti-Corruption Foundation in 2011. Navalny has been arrested numerous times by Russian authorities, most seriously in 2012, when federal authorities accused him of three instances of embezzlement and fraud, all of which he denied. In July 2013, he was convicted of embezzlement and was sentenced to five years in a corrective labor colony. The cases are widely believed to be fabricated in retaliation for his political activity. The Memorial Human Rights Center recognized Navalny as a political prisoner. Navalny was released from prison a day after sentencing. The prison fine was suspended in October 2013. In February 2014, Navalny and his brother were prosecuted on embezzlement charges, and Navalny was placed under house arrest and restricted from communicating with anyone but his family. He was sentenced in December 2014, with another suspended prison term of 3.5 years, and his brother received an actual 3.5-year prison sentence. In March 2017, Alexei Navalny and his anti-corruption foundation launched the campaign He is not dim to you, accusing Dmitry Medvedev, the prime minister and former president of Russia, of corruption. On March 26, Navalny organized a series of anti-corruption rallies in different cities across Russia. This appeal was responded to by the representatives of 95 of Russian cities and four cities abroad, London, Prague, Basel and Bonn. On April 27, 2017, Navalny was attacked by unknown assailants outside his office in the Anti-Corruption Foundation. They sprayed a mixture of brilliant green, possibly with other components, into his face. He reportedly lost 80% of the sight in his right eye. Navalny accuses the Kremlin of orchestrating the attack. Early life and career Navalny is of Russian and Ukrainian descent. His father is from Zalisha, 
a village in Ivankov Ryan, Kiev Oblast. Ukraine Navalny grew up in Obninsk about 100 kilometers southwest of Moscow, but spent his childhood summers with his grandmother in Ukraine. His parents, Anatoly Ivanovich Navalny and Lyudmyla Ivanovna Navalnaya, own a basket weaving factory in the village of Kobukovo, Moscow Oblast, which they have run. Since 1994, Navalny graduated from the People's Friendship University of Russia in 1998. With a law degree, he then studied securities and exchanges at the Finance University under the government of the Russian Federation. Navalny received a scholarship to the Yale World Fellows Program at Yale University in 2010. Anti-Corruption Investigations 2017 Russian protests on 26 March 2017 In 2008, Navalny spent around 300,000 rubles on stocks of five oil and gas companies, Rosneft, Gazprom, Gazprom Neft, Lick Oil, and Sergat Neft Gas, thus becoming an activist shareholder. As such, he began to aim at making the financial properties of these companies transparent. This is required by law, but there are allegations that some of the top managers of these companies are involved in thefts and are obscuring transparency. Other activities deal with wrongdoings by Russian police such as Sergei Magnitsky's case, improper usage of state's budget funds, quality of state services, and so on. In November 2010, Navalny published confidential documents about Transneft's auditing. According to Navalny's blog, about $4 billion were stolen by Transneft's leaders. During the construction of the Eastern Siberia Pacific Ocean oil pipeline, in December 2010, Navalny announced the launch of the Rospol project, which seeks to bring to light corrupt practices in the government procurement process. The project takes advantage of existing procurement regulation that requires all government requests for tender to be posted online. Information about winning bids must be posted online as well. In May 2011, Navalny launched Rosyama, a project that allowed individuals to report potholes and track government responses to complaints. In August 2011, Navalny publicized papers related to a scandalous real estate deal between Hungarian and Russian governments. According to the papers, Hungary sold a former embassy building in Moscow for $21 million to an offshore company of Victor Vexelberg, who immediately resold it to the Russian government for $111 million. Irregularities in the paper trail implied a collusion. Three Hungarian officials responsible for the deal were detained in February 2011. It is unclear whether any official investigation was conducted on the Russian side. In May 2012, Navalny accused Deputy Prime Minister Igor Shuvalov of corruption, stating that companies owned by Roman Abramovich and Alisha Usmanov had transferred tens of millions of dollars to Shuvalov's company, allowing Shuvalov to share in the profit from Usmanov's purchase of the British steel company Chorus. Navalny posted scans of documents to his blog showing the money transfers. Usmanov and Shuvalov stated the documents Navalny had posted were legitimate, but that the transaction had not represented a violation of Russian law. Shuvalov stated, I unswervingly followed the rules and principles of conflict of interest. For a lawyer, this is sacred. In July 2012, Navalny posted documents on his blog allegedly showing that Alexander Bastrykin, head of the Investigative Committee of Russia, owned an undeclared business in the Czech Republic. The posting was described by the Financial Times as Navalny's answering shot for having had his emails leaked during his arrest in the previous month.
In March 2017, Navalny launched the campaign, He is not Dimon to you, accusing Dmitry Medvedev, the Prime Minister, of corruption. The authorities either ignored the report produced by Navalny, or commented that the report was issued by a convicted criminal and is not worth commenting on. On March 26, Navalny organized a series of anti-corruption rallies in different cities across Russia. In some cities, the rallies were sanctioned by the authorities, but in others, including Moscow and St. Petersburg, they were not allowed. The Moscow police said that 500 people had been detained, but according to the human rights group OVD Info, 1030 people were detained in Moscow alone including Navalny himself. In March 27, he was fined 20,000 rubles minimum for organizing an illegal protest, and jailed for 15 days for resisting arrest. Yabloko In 2000, following announcement of a new law that would raise the electoral threshold, for state Duma elections, Navalny joined the Russian United Democratic Party Yabloko. According to Navalny, the law was stacked against Yabloko and Union of Right Forces, and he decided to join, even though he was not a big fan of either one. In 2001, he was listed as a member of the party. In 2002, he was elected to the Regional Council of the Moscow branch of Yabloko. In 2003, he headed the Moscow subdivision of the election campaign of the party for the parliamentary election held in December. In April 2004, Navalny became chief of staff of the Moscow branch of Yabloko, which he remained until February 2007. In 2004, he also became deputy chief of the Moscow branch of the party. In 2006-07, he was a member of the Federal Council of the party. In August 2005, Navalny was incorporated into Social Council of Central Administrative Okrug of Moscow, created prior to the Moscow City Duma election held later that year, in which he took part as a candidate. In November, he was one of the initiators of Youth Public Chamber, intended to help younger politicians take part in legislative initiatives. At the same time, in 2005, Navalny started another youth social movement, named DA, Democratic Alternative. The project was not connected to Yabloko. Within the movement, Navalny participated in a number of projects. In particular, he was one of the organizers of the movement run political debates, which soon got resonance in media. Navalny also organized television debates via state run Moscow Channel TV Center. Two initial episodes showed high ratings, but the show was suddenly cancelled. According to Navalny, authorities prohibited some people from receiving TV coverage. In late 2006, Navalny appealed to the Moscow City Hall, asking to grant the permission to conduct the nationalist 2006 Russian march. He, however, added that Yabloko condemned any ethnic or racial hatred and any xenophobia and called on police to oppose any fascist, Nazi, xenophobic manifestations. Navalny was an observer. During the organizing committee meetings, he was named as an organizer for the march in media, which he denied. In July 2007, Navalny resigned from the post of deputy chief of the Moscow branch of the party. By then, he had founded a nationalist movement, the People. During a party council in December 2007, Navalny publicly demanded the immediate resignation of party chairman and all his deputies, and the re-election of at least 70% of the bureau. He was consequently expelled from Yabloko for causing political damage to the party, in particular for nationalist activities. 
Navalny declared the actual rationale beyond his exclusion was his demand of resignation by Grigory Yavlinsky, who was the leader of the party at the moment. The People Movement On June 23, 2007, Navalny co-founded a new political movement, named The People which upheld the positions of democratic nationalism, defined as a fight for democracy and the rights of ethnic Russians, according to a Navalny's biographer. Navalny differentiates the ethnic and social aspects of the term, highlighting the latter. In June 2008, the movement joined forces with two other Russian nationalist movements movement against illegal immigration and Great Russia, to form a new coalition. Russian National Movement Navalny declared the movement would participate in the next parliamentary elections, planning to get a great share of votes, he added, up to 60% of the population upholds spontaneous nationalism, but it is not legally effectuated. Later the same month, the MAII and the people signed a cooperation agreement at the procedure. He defined the new political nationalism as democratic, fundamentally and statistically, adding, we can teach blatant liberals a thing or two. He also declared he wanted to distance the coalition from the skinheads, calling for close collaboration with the leftists and the Liberals for fair elections the coalition would win, and demanded for political liberalization and early parliamentary elections in Russia. In 2011, Navalny admitted the movement, the people, did not establish itself as a working structure. Involvement in 2011 parliamentary election and 2011 to 13 Russian protests According to Gennady Gukov, Navalny was invited to participate in the elections. Navalny denied this, claiming his anti-United Russia campaign was more helpful for any other party than his immediate participation. In December 2011, after parliamentary elections and accusations of electoral fraud, some 6,000 gathered in Moscow to protest the fraud and some 300 were arrested including Navalny. After a period of uncertainty, Navalny was produced at court and thereafter sentenced to the maximum 15 days for defying a government official. Alexei Venediktov, editor-in-chief of Echo of Moscow radio station, called the arrest a political mistake. Jailing Navalny transforms him from an online leader into an offline one. Navalny was kept in the same prison as several other activists, including Ilya Yashin and Sergei Udaltsov, the unofficial leader of the vanguard of Red Youth, a radical Russian communist youth group. Udaltsov has gone on hunger strike to protest against the conditions. Navalny was arrested on December 5, convicted and sentenced to 15 days in jail. Since his arrest, his blog has become available in English. In a profile published the day after his release, the BBC described Navalny as arguably the only major opposition figure to emerge in Russia in the past five years. On his release on December 20, Navalny called on Russians to unite against Putin, who Navalny said would try to snatch victory in the presidential election, which was held on March 4, 2012. Navalny told reporters on his release that it would be senseless for him to run in the presidential elections, because the Kremlin would not allow them to be fair. But he said that if free elections were held, he would be ready to run. On December 24, he helped lead a demonstration much larger than the post-election one, telling to the crowd, I see enough people to take the Kremlin right now. In March 2012, after Putin was elected president, Navalny helped lead an anti-Putin rally in Moscow's Pushkin Square, attended by between 14,000 
and 20,000 people. After the rally, Navalny was detained by authorities for several hours, then released. On May 8, the day after Putin was inaugurated, Navalny and Udaltsov were arrested after an anti-Putin rally at Clean Ponds and were each given 15-day jail sentences. Amnesty International designated the two men prisoners of conscience. On June 11, Moscow prosecutors conducted a 12-hour search of Navalny's home, office, and a search of the apartment of one of Navalny's relatives. The searches were done as part of a broader investigation into the clashes between opposition activists and riot police that happened on May 6. Soon afterwards, some of Navalny's personal emails were posted online by a pro-government blogger party. On June 26, 2012, it was announced Navalny's comrades would establish a new political party based on e-democracy. Navalny declared he did not plan to participate in this project at the moment. On July 31, they filed a document to register an organizing committee of the future party. The party was named, the People's Alliance. The party was declared to be centrist. One of them current leaders of the party, and Navalny's ally Vladimir Ashurkov explained this was intended to help the party get a large share of voters. However, at the moment, party did not have a comprehensive ideology. The party would limit the number of its members to 500. Navalny said the concept of political parties was outdated and added his participation would make maintaining the party more difficult. However, he blessed the party and discussed its maintenance with its leaders. They, in turn, stated they wanted to eventually see Navalny as a member of the party. The party planned to use the activity of its members in media and the Internet as a massive advantage. Ashurkov said he expected the party to get an official registration during spring 2013. On December 15, 2012, the party held its founding congress. Navalny expressed support to the party, saying, The People's Alliance is my party, but again refused to join it. Citing the criminal cases against him, the party announced it planned reforms on judiciary and law enforcement, a partial transition of presidential powers to the parliament, and limiting migration into the country. On April 10, 2013, the party filed documents for the official registration of the party. On April 30, the registration of the party was suspended. The party held a second congress to correct the violations proclaimed by the Ministry of Justice. On July 5, the party was declined registration, according to Izvestia. Not all founders of the party were present during the Congress, even though the papers were signed by their autographs. Navalny reacted to that with a tweet saying, A salvo of all guns. Following the mayoral election, on September 15, Navalny declared he would join and, possibly, head the party. On November 17, the party held another founding congress. Navalny was elected as the leader of the party, Sokolniki Park in Moscow, the 25th of August 2013. In November 2013, registered party, Homeland, led by Andrei Bogdanov changed its name to the People's Alliance on November 30. Ministry of Justice recognized the renaming as legal. On January 8, 2014, Navalny's party filed documents for registration for a second time. On January 20, registration of the party was suspended, according to Russian laws. No two parties can share a name. On February 8, 2014, Navalny's party changed its name to Progress Party. On February 25, the party was registered. At that moment it had six months to register regional branches in at least in half the federal subjects of Russia. 
The time period could be prolonged if the party was appealing from a court judgment of denial of registration of a branch in at least one subject. According to Dmitry Kronev, member of the main board of the party, the party had 15 registered regional branches on August 22, and the party informed the Ministry of Justice the term would be prolonged, citing suspension of registration at trials regarding registration of regional branches. On September 24, it informed the ministry about another prolongation of the term. On September 26, the party declared it registered 43 regional branches. An unnamed source of Izvestia in the ministry said registrations completed after the six months term would not be taken in consideration, adding, yes, trials are taking place in some regions, they cannot register new branches in other regions. During the trials, because the main term is over, Navalny's blog counted, our answer is simple, a six-month term for registration has been legally prolonged ad interim prosecution of appeals of denials and registration suspensions. On October 2, 2014, the party filed documents of registration of 44 regional branches, according to Krenev. From that moment, the party should have been added to the list of structures eligible for participation in elections. The party tried to appoint candidates for municipal elections in two towns in Moscow Oblast, but was rejected the right to do so because it was not added to the said list. After that, the party tried to challenge the non-inclusion in the list in courts. However, the standing has been supported by every next court the party addressed, with the latest being Moscow City Court on March 30, 2015. On February 1, the party held a convention, where Navalny stated the party was preparing for the 2016 elections, declaring the party would maintain its activity across Russia, saying, We are unabashed to work in remote lands where the opposition does not work. We can even work in Crimea. The candidates the party would appoint were to be chosen via primary elections. However, he added, parties' candidates may be removed from elections. On April 17, the party initiated a coalition of democratic parties. On April 28, 2015, the party was deprived of registration by the Ministry of Justice, which stated the party had not registered the required number of regional branches within six months after the official registration. Kronev claimed the party could be only eliminated by the Supreme Court, and he added not all trials of registration of regional branches were over, calling the verdict illegal twice. He added, the party would refer to the European Court of Human Rights, and expressed confidence the party would be restored and admitted to elections. The next day, the party officially challenged the verdict. Moscow mayoral candidacy on May 30, 2013, Sergei Sobyanin, the mayor of Moscow, argued an elected major is an advantage for the city compared to an appointed one, and on June 4, he announced he would meet the President Vladimir Putin and ask him for a snap election. Mentioning the Muscovites would agree the governor election should take place in the city of Moscow and the surrounding Moscow Oblast simultaneously. On June the 6th, the request was granted, and the next day, the Moscow City Duma appointed the election on September 8, the National Voting Day. On June 3, Navalny announced he would run for the post. To become an official candidate, he would need either 70,000 signatures of Muscovites or to be pegged for the office by a registered party, and then to collect 110 signatures of municipal deputies from 110 different subdivisions. Navalny chose to be pegged by a party, RPRPARNAS, 
Among the six candidates who were officially registered as such, only two were able to collect the required number of the signatures themselves, and the other four were given a number of signatures by the Council of Municipal Formations. Following a recommendation by Sobyanin to overcome the requirement, on July 17, Navalny was registered as one of the six candidates for the Moscow mayoral election. However, on July 18, he was sentenced for a five-year prison term for the embezzlement and fraud charges that were declared in 2012. Several hours after his sentencing, he pulled out of the race and called for a boycott of the election. However, later that day, the prosecution office requested the accused should be freed on bail and travel restrictions. Since the verdict had not yet taken legal effect, saying they had previously followed the restrictions, Navalny was a mayoral candidate, and an imprisonment would thus not comply with his rule for equal access to the electorate. On his return to Moscow after being freed pending an appeal, he vowed to stay in the race. The Washington Post has speculated that his release was ordered by the Kremlin in order to make the election and so by an end appear more legitimate. Navalny's campaign was based mainly on fundraising, out of 103.4 million rubles. The total size of his electoral fund, 97.3 million, were transferred by individuals throughout Russia. Such a number is unprecedented in Russia. It achieved a high profile through an unprecedentedly large campaign organization that involved around 20,000 volunteers who passed out leaflets and hung banners, as well as several campaign rallies a day around the city, they were the main driving force for the campaign. The New Yorker described the resulted campaign as a miracle, along with Navalny's release on July 19, the fundraising campaign, and the personality of Navalny himself. The campaign received very little television coverage and did not utilize billboards. Thanks to Navalny's strong campaign, his result grew over time, weakening so by Annans, and in the end of the campaign, he declared the runoff election was a hair's breadth away. The largest sociological companies predicted so by Annan would win the election, scoring 58% to 64% of the vote, they expected Navalny to receive 15-20% to of the vote, and the turnout was to be 45-52%. to The final results of the voting showed Navalny received 27.24% of the vote, more than candidates appointed by the parties that received second, third, fourth, and fifth highest results during the 2011 parliamentary elections. Altogether, Navalny fared better in the center and southwest of Moscow, which have higher income and education levels. However, Sobyanin received 51.37% of the vote, which meant he won the election. The turnout was 32.03%. The companies explained the differences arose from the fact so by Annan's electorate did not vote, feeling their candidate was guaranteed to win. Navalny's campaign officers' measures predicted so by Annan would score 49 to 51 percent, and Navalny would get 24 to 26 percent of votes. Bolotnaya Square in Moscow the 9th of September 2013, many experts claimed that the election had been fair, that the number of irregularities had been much lower than those of other elections held within the country, and that the irregularities had had little effect on the result. Dmitry Abizalilov, leading expert of Center of Political Conjuncture, added low turnout figures provide a further sign of fairness of the election because that shows they were not overestimated. However, according to Andre Buzin, co-chairman of the GOLOS Association, State Departments of Social Security aided people who did not originally want to vote to lists of those who would vote at home. 
with the number of such voters being 4.5% of those who voted, and added this did cause questions if Sobyanin would score 50% if this did not take place. Dmitry Orshkin, leader of the People's Election Commission project, said now that the runoff election was only 1.5% away, all details would be looked at very closely, and added it was impossible to prove anything, juridically. Election On September 9, the day following the election, Navalny publicly denounced the tally, saying, we do not recognize the results. They are fake. So Bayanin's office rejected an offer of a vote recount. On September 12, Navalny addressed the Moscow city court to overturn the result of the poll. The court rejected the assertion. Navalny then challenged the decision in the Supreme Court of Russia. But the court ruled that the election results were legitimate. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.